Hey guys, uh, just putting this at the very beginning of the video to let you know that um, a lot of the things I'm saying when it comes to dates in here are wrong because I actually recorded this day of uh, February 13th, but due to everything going on, I had to keep pushing it back. So you guys are getting it today, a whole nine days later. That's uh, That's great. Anyway, um... Is it nine days later? No, it's not nine days later. Sorry, I can't count. That's on me. My bad, G. I hope you guys enjoy. Sorry this is late, and You Laugh, You Lose 20 is gonna be next week. Bye. I remember going to LaGrange College in 2016. I didn't want to go to college, to be completely honest, but that's a story for another day. I remember going and not really finding my friend group for a while, but one day, I don't know how it happened, I just ended up hanging out with one person and then that led to a group of people and that's when I started hanging out with my college family. The friend group consisted of quite a lot of people, um, but the ones I want to focus on, or more specifically the one I want to focus on, was my best friend is my best friend, Aston Williams. Aston was probably one of the most normal people in the friend group, or at least he was until he started hanging out with us. Um, it was it was crazy because. He was a pretty vanilla guy, very vanilla, but I guess there's no way to sugarcoat it. We, we really brought out the worst in him. Upon going to college, I said nigger a lot, and I mean a lot, a lot. I was like, oh, nigger this and nigger that, it's, it's our word, I'll use it when I want to. And I remember everyone in the friend group started saying it because it, it just became a part of our voc vocabulary. Aston was one of the only ones who tried to change that. I remember something that he used to do was that whenever he accidentally let it slip or when he said it, he'd be like, oh fuck. And then he'd have someone in the friend group slap him in the back as hard as he pos as hard as they possibly could. It, it was a sort of a restraining mechanism because he didn't want that in his vocabulary and that makes sense he was a really good guy he was a very amazing person and he didn't want to have language like that in his vocabulary and i 100 percent respect him for that i'm trying to say it less now too uh, not because it's not funny i still think the word nigger is hilarious it sounds funny it's spelled funny sure it has a tragic past but it's my word and i'll use it when i want to aston truly was the glue that held the friendship together in most instances. Whenever things were going patchy between people, he would usually be the ones to say, hey, come on, let's calm down, let's let's think this through. He, he was just a really good person. And I feel like I get a lot of my personality nowadays from the way he acted. He was always super generous and he was always going out of his way to make time and make availabilities for us. I remember when me and Pyra and I were first getting started with the Bridgie T, we were content to just record it in a dorm room with a single microphone in between us, just reading back and forth from the same script. Um, Aston wasn't having that. He was in the music program, and he was like, hey, we have access to recording rooms. I can get you guys to...
come in and we can record your lines. And we were like, really? And you're like, yeah, yeah. And episode two was the first one we had with studio quality vocals. And I made a big deal about that in the video where we went behind the scenes in Abridging Tea. I sang a lot of his praises in that video. I was like, this man is the best. Thank you so much. There was something about Aston that whenever he came around, you just knew it was going to be a good time. It was going to be a lot of fun. And even when something seemed mundane to me, like, for instance, around that time, I stopped being interested in snow. I thought snow days were the worst thing ever. He found a way to get me interested. One year at LaGrange College, when it was snowing, we, I don't remember when it started snowing, but we woke up and it was just covered in snow. All the roads were iced over. It was something. And this man actually got me to go outside and play in it. We were making snow angels, throwing snowballs at each other, saying this is the Great Ninja War Part 2 or Part 5, and we ended up skipping generations, the Great Ninja War Part 632, just throwing snowballs. I remember we had one snowball specifically that we stuck in the freezer, and we said, whenever we throw this and give someone a concussion, that's going to be the final Great Ninja War. And that snowball stayed in the freezer for a good three months. A good three months. I remember we weren't just playing in the snow. We all decided to walk down to the gas station and um, just see the sights, see everything covered in snow. And this man, he was a risk taker. I, I guess he grew up doing it, but he was just skating along the sidewalk and skating along the streets the entire way. And we're just like, Aston, you're going to fall and bust your ass open. And he's like, no, nah, I've, I've been doing this for a long time. Oh, oh, oh. That was his laugh. I, I love his laugh so much. His, his, his laugh is, it still brings a smile to my face. It, it really does. I remember he was just skating all up and down the streets, just new, new, new the whole time. Meanwhile, me and Pyronite are at the back of the group holding each other's hands, holding on to each other, taking baby steps because we don't want to fall and break our asses. And Pyronite fell three times being as careful as he wants. Meanwhile, Aston's over here doing fucking pirouettes in the middle of the road and it it was it was it was too much it was too much i remember we did our best to get on his nerves but he had such a chill personality that no matter what we did it never really got under his skin like ever we used to play mario party 8 all the time it's my second favorite Mario Party because I got to play with them. Even though Daisy fucked me consistently. I mean, no lube, all in, stretching my asshole fucked me. But it was always fun because he was there with Yoshi kicking my ass the entire time. And I'm a little bit sad because we never got to declare a winner. Because every time we got to the results screen, we had what we would call... A blackout that is when someone in the room we don't know who it might have been me consistently every time would hold down the power button on their Wii remote and shut off the console before a winner could be announced and that happened every single time a winner was never announced and it's gonna stay that way forever. We're never gonna have a rematch. We're never going to uh, finish a game of Mario Party. That's just that's just how it goes. If I finish a game, it doesn't feel right. Aston was also always very vocal about things he wanted to do and his dreams. I remember two specific occasions. One is. He showed me an anime movie that he had been bugging me to watch for a while called You Are Umaso, or You Are Umasao, whichever you want to say it. I always said uh, Umasao. A movie about a uh, Tyrannosaurus Rex who um, is raised by herbivores. Well, I don't even know if he's a Tyrannosaurus Rex. He's just a carnivore raised by herbivores 
and uh, once his natural traits of eating meat start coming out, he runs away and learns kung fu. Or martial arts. Let's just say martial arts, because I don't know what specific type it is. I'm not trying to get canceled for saying the wrong type of martial arts, because I know Twitter's petty like that. He ends up adopting a smaller Ankylosaurus and names it Umasau. And he becomes a sort of guardian figure. And what ends up happening is that at the end, he goes back to his family um, and saves them. And this is the part of the movie that got me. This is something we wanted to talk about in the abridge, but we never did. Um, at the end of the movie, if I'm remembering correctly, he ends up beating his dad in a fight and the dad leaves, I think. But then we see asteroids and then the, and then the movie just ends. It, 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 it just ends. So we came up with our inside joke. It's implied but not confirmed because there's a scene and we talk about this in the abridge as well where the son or um his adopted brother um i can't remember the i think his name is hart hart's adopted brother ends up staying behind with their mom and then in the time skip when they come back he's still there uh, with his mom but for some reason she has more kids and they look just like the adopted brother. And I'm like, Aston, Aston, did this dinosaur fuck his mother? He's like, it's implied, but not confirmed. And as we were watching the movie a third or fourth time, I turned to him and I was like, dude, let's abridge this movie. And he was like, are you serious? I'm like, yes. And we started the movie over and we started taking notes. They're like, this is what we should do. This is how we should, uh plan it out this is how everything is gonna go and um we stayed up all night coming up with jokes and doing all of that 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 was very common for me in college to stay up all night and just make jokes with people in the friend group and i remember the day we posted that abridged april 27th 2018 that felt good that that was one of the best birthdays I've ever had, posting that video. I also talked he was always vocal about his dreams. Uh, that could be two things. Uh, one is his dream of making music. I remember some days I would just go to the uh, recording room with him and just listen to the stuff he made for his music classes. And I remember there was one piece. I don't, I don't think anyone has that. I think it's still at LaGrange or they might've deleted it. I'm not entirely sure. I hope they didn't, but he let me listen to it. And he was one of my only friends at LaGrange that I ever saw cry. He was listening to it. And he told me that whenever he listens to this song, he imagines his future where he owns a nice beachside house and a big fluffy white dog and he's just sitting on the porch with that dog watching the sun go down that was the first time he ever really opened up to me and I got to realize that it wasn't just about me. Other people in the friend group had dreams and goals that they wanted to achieve. And that's when I decided that if I had the power to do it, I was going to help my friends achieve those goals. That's why I extend the hand to Diego to voice in any project I have. That's why I ask Pyro Knight to write stuff for me, even though he's deathly allergic to doing work. Until the king summons us again, keep your flames burning, my faithful knights. I'm sorry, I wasn't recording. That's why whenever I have a song I need done, I either go to 
Nider Breath or John or even Water Witch. I have Water Witch help me with so much stuff and I need to credit her more often. The other dreams he told me about was that that's that, that's just because I at some point I got very in touch with dreams and I was able to interpret almost any dream that people told me. Like, deadass, if you comment any dream that you have in the comment, I'll be able to interpret it for you. Whether or not you like the answer is up to you to decide. But, uh, he told me a dream about uh, how there was this cool red porcupine he saw once. And he was like, oh, that's a cool ass porcupine. And he goes to pet it, but uh, it always hurts him. And I was like, oh, well, that just means that there's something beautiful in your life that you've been looking at for so long. But you're afraid that you'll get hurt if you actually go forward and try to achieve that thing that's so appealing to you. And he was like, oh, well, I guess that makes sense. And I was like, or that means you're gay. And he was like, well, okay, you know what? This is why I don't tell you anything. I'm not ashamed to admit that I had favorites. Even though I had a friend group, I had my favorite people to hang out with. Aston was one of those people in the friend group. Of course, I'd be happy to sit around the table with Pyronite, Wessonator, uh, um, Meerkat, and everyone else. But whenever, whenever Aston walked into the, uh, the calf, I remember that I'd, I'd always get very happy. He started to get worried about how happy I was when I saw him. and Because I remember one night, um, we were putting stuff up from a marching band competition. And, no, it wasn't a competition. I think it was just a game. And we were putting stuff up from the field. And he was like, hey, Brennan, you can be 100% honest with me. And I was like, oh, dude, yeah, sure, what's up? He's like, are you gay? And I was like, <laughs> <coughs> oh, God, it's still killing me. And I was like, what makes you ask that? He was like, you always seem super excited to see me. And I was like, well, of course I am. You're like one of my best friends and I love you so much. And he's like, yeah, but are you gay? And I was like, only if you want me to be daddy. And he was like, Brandon. And I was like, no, I'm, I'm not gay. I'm, I'm really not. It's just that I, I, I feel a connection to you that I don't feel with my other friends. I couldn't explain it. It's just whenever I saw him, I got so happy. He always had an air to him that no one else provided. I mentioned the band. Uh, he was the one who made me, who convinced me to do work study with the band because I was like, oh, I get to spend more time with him and Wessonator. And I remember... By doing that, we got to go on a trip to Six Flags um, due to a marching band competition. This actually was a competition. We ended up uh, going to the competition and we had to go to the hotel. And I remember we wanted to uh, go out in like a huge group. So, so we did, right? And I don't know who started it, but someone in the group started Naruto running like down the sidewalk and across the street and then the rest of us followed so we're all naruto running across the street like a bunch of weeaboos and a car honks at us as they're going by right and we go off and do our thing i'll tell you what happened that uh, uh, in a bit but as we're on our way back we noticed the same car that honked on us had gotten in a wreck so someone must have gotten in a wreck watching us naruto run across the street that, mm, I may have been responsible for someone's, uh, hopefully not death, but injury. I might have been responsible for someone's injury. So if you see this video and you remember a pack of weeaboos, Naruto running across the street, that was me, my bad, I'm sorry. But yeah, I remember when we were going out, the group split up. Someone to go go get food. Me, Aston, and some more people in the group went to uh, Walmart just to browse and see what they had. And this is when we used to play a game called What Are The Odds? Where two people, where someone would be like, hey, what are the odds that you, I don't know, yell out the N-word in the middle of the street? And someone would say, oh, like, one in 25. And then they count down one, two, three. And then they both say a number at the same time. And if they said the exact same number, that person had to shout out the N-word as loud as possible. Now, of course, that's not 
the only thing you could do, but um, it was a choice. It was a choice that you could do. I remember we were walking in the Walmart parking lot and there were these two people ahead of us. Now I'm saying this right now, do not do what we did. It was incredibly immature and stupid and you can get in a lot of, tr of trouble for this. I'm documenting this to let you know how stupid I was as a child. And yes, I do consider myself a child in college, not legally, but emotionally and uh, ma and mature wise, yes, I was a fucking child and I deserve all the hate for what I'm about to out myself for. So we were walking in the parking lot and there were these two women at going in into Walmart and Aston looked at me, he was like, hey Brandon, I was like, what? He's like, what are the odds you'll, uh, what are the odds you'll shout out to uh, the people up front? And I was like, oh, well, sure, I'll say like one in 15. And we were like, one, two, three, 12. And I was like, no, Aston, don't make me do this. He was like, no, no, I'm not. I, I was a child back then. So he was like, Brandon, I know I won, but you don't have, have to do this. And I just instinctively yelled out, damn, damn girl, girl, you looking, you looking good. 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 And it was quiet for a second. Aston was holding in his laughter. And then uh, one of the women yelled out, And the sense of dread that enveloped my body, I was like, oh, uh, oh. Uh. And Aston was just losing it, just laughing so hard in the parking lot. I remember the whole time we were in that Walmart, I was like, I have to track them down and apologize. I have to let them know that we were playing a game. This is, oh my God. I, I, I probably scarred someone. <coughs> ah, I'm dying right now. I'm dying as... punishment for what I did. But anyway, the next day after that, we ended up going to Six Flags. Like, actually going to the amusement park and just having a good old time. Just having so much fun. And I remember a lot of the roller coasters I didn't want to go on, but he was egging me on. Um... I think that was the first time I actually opened my eye. No, that was with Tiago. Never mind. I'm lying to you guys. Don't listen to me. But yeah, I remember going on a lot of roller coasters with the guys, going on a lot of the rides. But once it got to acrophobia, I was like, nope. And I was a bitch. And I walked right back down to be by myself. Um, but Aston was like, hey, man, if you want to go on one more ride, we can. And I was like, oh, dude, bet. And there was this Wonder Woman ride um, near the kids section. He was like, Brandon, come on. This is stupid. It was a ride that just basically spun you around in a chair as it was going up and down on an incline as it revolved in another circle. He was like, Brandon, this is so stupid. We we, we have to ride something different. And, he, and I was like, come on, man, this is gonna be fun. So the ride starts, and of course, he's being a sourpuss the whole time. He's like, this is so stupid. Why are we doing this? This is the dumbest ride imaginable. But then when the chairs unlocked and started spinning counterclockwise to the actual ride spinning clockwise, this man was like, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck, oh fuck. And I was just dying of laughter. This man went from zero to 100 real quick, just enjoying the entire ride, having the most fun of his entire life. And we finished the ride, right? And I was like, hey, yo, Aston. He's like, what? You wanna go again? He's like, yeah, yeah, let's go again. I even remember when I started getting him involved in my YouTube stuff, um, doing Diddles and Friends. We reacted to Scary Godmother together. That would, That's what inspired his Halloween costume to be the baseball player driving his SUV. Um, I didn't vlog it, but going trick-or-treating with them for the first time in my 21 years of life was wild. It wasn't even my 21 years. I think I was 19 at the time or 20. And it was my first time going trick-or-treating and just being with the gang was so much fun. I know Wesley did a video. I'm gonna put it up right here while I'm talking. It was, uh, 
It was some of the most fun I've ever had. Not even just getting the candy, but just hanging out with everyone. And unfortunately, my ADHD doesn't let me remember most of that night. But I just, I remember the feeling of hanging out with everyone, going trick-or-treating. I just remember Pyro Knight was dressed up as the father of the group. That was something. That was something. I don't exactly remember the date. Well, I do. It was February 12th. It's a couple days before Valentine's Day, and I was in a terrible mood because I was planning on asking someone to be my Valentine, and my sixth sense kicked in, and they turned out to be gay. Uh, that doesn't make a lot of sense without explanation. I had feelings for a lot of people in college, and whenever I developed feelings for someone, they turned out to be gay. So the joke became that my sixth sense was learning if someone was a homosexual. And I was feeling pretty bad, so I was spending the day with Pyro Knight and Aston, just having a good time, just having a having a great old time. We spent the whole day together. I think this was shortly after a night where we all got drunk in the dorm rooms. Oh no, I got drunk in college. <laughs> and uh, Aston had lost his shirt. I'm pretty sure it's in one of the vlogs on the channel. I, uh... <laughs> He's wearing a shirt in one scene. We all run, run away, and when we come back and round the corner, his shirt's just off, and we just don't know where it went. Even today, it still, it, it still amuses me how his shirt just disappeared. We don't know where the fuck it went, but that's not the here nor nor there. Uh, I was hanging out with Pyronite and Aston all day, and I remember they were doing a um, they were doing a game in the center of the dorm where you could put on drunk goggles and play Mario Kart 8. And me and Aston tried it, and uh, I think I lost twice, but eh, that's neither here nor there. I remember looking over at him and seeing that he didn't have his usual, like, chipper smile on his face. And I was like, hey man, you good? He was like, oh yeah, I'm just tired. We've been hanging out all day. I, I really want to go back to the room. And... We went back to the room, we hung out in the living room for a bit, and we were still just joking and laughing. But at some point, he just said, yeah, I, I think I'm good. I think I'm done. I'm gonna... I'm gonna go to my room now. And I was like, you sure? And he was like, yeah, I'm just gonna go, go to bed. Now, of course, he went in his room and all of that. I was still hanging out with Pyro and I. We were still having fun, goofing off and doing all of that. And I remember before I left, I went to Aston's room to try to go in like I always did. We had a trick where you could like shove a key card or any card in the door to like unlock it to force your way in. Um, and I was doing that and he was like, Brandon, just pl please stop. And I'm just like, or he's like, I, I just want to tell you good night. And, and he's like, oh, well, good night. Bye. And I remember I was about to leave, but before I walked out of the dorm room, I turned back around and I went to his door and I said, hey, Aston, he was like, what do you want, Brandon? And I said, I love you. I, I told him that I love you. And then I went back to my room. So February 13th rolls around, and I'm doing my normal thing of not going to class, uh, skipping class and going on my morning walk, and just, uh, fuck classes, I don't need to go to class. And I'm doing my walk, and the group me that we're in, I don't even know if group me is still a thing, but it's just blowing up. I know the band chat is asking, hey, do you know where Aston is? Uh, no, he he did leave the room this morning. Oh, well, I, I don't know. So, after that, the normal group me is like, you, you guys haven't seen Aston, have you? He didn't show up to lunch. And this is going to sound so ridiculous. But, this is relevant to the story. When I was reading those messages... 
I started thinking about Sayori. And I was not a very fit person in college. I was fat as fuck. But when I started thinking about her, I don't think my fat ass has ever run so fast in all my goddamn life. I was like at least half a mile away from his room. But I ran the entire time. I didn't stop. When I got to a certain point, a friend who, an old friend who goes by Marcus now, saw me running. He was like, hey, where are you going? And I was like, oh, I'm, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to Aston's room to check on him. He might still be asleep. He was like, oh, all right, well, come on, get in the car, we'll go. So we get to his room and his door is shut. And Aston always had this trick to keep us from getting out of his room where he would like put a belt in between the door to jam it so that it wouldn't open. We couldn't force it open and stuff like that. So we're knocking on the door the whole time just, hey Aston, you need to wake up. It's time to... We're knocking on the door, saying, hey, Aston, come on, we gotta get up. And we just think, oh, he's just ignoring us like he normally does. We should, we should get in there and dogpile on him so he wakes up. And we tried the key card thing I told you about, the card thing, to try to jiggle the door. And for some reason, the door just won't budge. And we're like, okay, so if the door is stuck, we'll just... I know he'll be mad at us, but we'll cut the belt off the door to break whatever mechanism he has. So we got scissors and we cut the belt. We heard the we heard the unmistakable sound of a body hitting the floor. We stopped. We didn't say anything. But we knew what we heard. Mm -hmm. We ran to the RA's room to tell them that uh, we think there's something going on in the room and we needed help. So they came over to the room and they were, they were banging on the door, like a lot. The loudest banging I've ever heard. To this day, I don't, I don't like the sound of people banging on doors. They called 911 and the paramedics and firefighters, first responders showed up and they had to, they made us leave. We, uh, we weren't allowed to be there when they cut down the door. So we were all freaking out, but of course we had that twinge of optimism. It, it, it's fine. He'll, he'll be fine. We can, he's, he's going to be fine. And one of our friends at the time came around and said that they saw the paramedics wheel him out and covered up entirely. He wasn't going to come back. lost one of my best friends that day. <laughs> and I didn't even get to see him again. I didn't even get to see his body. <laughs> I 
I didn't get to hear his laugh one more time. <laughs> I still remember the day we had the wake for him. Everyone in the friend group, really, we really didn't know what to do. All we could do was hug and cry. We had a candlelight vigil for him in front of one of the dorm rooms. And I remember the whole time I was looking at a staircase. I was, I was waiting for him to walk up the staircase and just be like, I got you. He never did. Not a single time. I remember I stopped going to classes after that. They gave us a grace period and therapy and all of that, but I just, I just stopped. I was too emotionally devastated. I couldn't. I could not go back after that. And of course that led to me flunking out and having to come back home. A year passed. And... Everyone was planning on getting together on February 13th just to be together and hang out and talk about everything. And I remember that even though my mom understood the emotional weight of it, it wouldn't have been right to let me go down and be with everyone during that especially since I had never driven on the highway before by myself and it just it was too big of a risk for her to let me go and that devastated me the thought of doing that of missing out on being with my friends on a day like that destroyed me It hurt to a point where I considered taking my own life. And I almost did. I was at work one day and I was like, what's the point? I told my boss I had to go home early and I came home and I sat and contemplated for a while, just thinking about how none of it was worth it. I didn't have a reason to stay. I could just go be with Aston and be happy. I was so close to doing it that day. But I 
amidst all the voices telling me that it wasn't worth going on and that I should just do it and end it all. I heard Diddles tell me to shut the fuck up. And everything went quiet. I've been struggling with depression ever since I lost Aston. Since we lost Aston. But I'm not going to give up. Because just like he shared his dream with me, I shared my dream with him. To be the best cartoonist I could be and make shows that would help people deal with what I'm going through. Deal with the same things that I'm going through. And every time I think about giving up, I think about Aston. I know that if I gave up, he'd be so fucking disappointed. Whenever I'm laying in bed thinking, oh, I can put it off till tomorrow, I think about him. And I get my ass out of bed. And I get to drawing. Because I haven't forgotten the dream I told him. That I was going to be one of the best cartoonists. But yeah, I did this whole thing just to, just to send a message. If there's someone in your life that you care about, whether it be a friend, a significant other, a family member, let them know that you love them. Let them know how you really feel about them. Let them know how important you are. they are to you. I know he's watching over me. I know he wants me to succeed. And I know he has that big fluffy white dog he always wanted. I love you, Aston. <laughs>